WP Bosses episode number 23. Uh, we're here with Rob Stinson from XWP. Sorry, I didn't mean to rhyme that, but I did. <laughs> um, let's go around and say hello, everyone. Paul, who are you? Hi, I'm Paul, and uh, I run a business called Gold Coast Business Websites. We specialize in building uh, boutique and custom built and uh, also template based uh, WordPress websites. I've got a couple of people over in the Philippines that uh, slag away and do all my work, which is amazing. While well, I'm, uh, you know, have the time to be on these, uh, these sessions, which is, is crazily awesome. Um, I also run a service called WP Genie, which is a website maintenance and website care service. And that's me. Thanks. Nice. Tracy, who are you? Hello, I'm Tracy Camp from Get Web Creative uh, down in Port Macquarie or near Port Macquarie. That's about it. Cool. And I'm Roby Lawrence and I'm also in Port Macquarie, well, near Port Macquarie, and I can pretty much. Hey, Tracy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't really see Tracy out the window, but we're pretty close. And I also build websites and, and have a beard and I'm actually wearing a WordCamp Orlando. Woo. I didn't go, but I got the shirt. So that's good. WordCamp for something. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've got Rob. Rob, who are you? Hi, I'm Rob. <laughs> I work for XWP. Um, we're, I guess, an engineering and consultancy agency, very much focused on the WordPress space. Um, I live on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. I have three kids. I have one wife. Um, and I recently have launched a, a WordPress plugin called Block Lab um, with a couple of friends of mine. Awesome. Nice. Let's, let's talk about that a bit more. Just in a second, sure. though. Not mm -hmm. yet. Not mm -hmm. yet. I have a couple of pre questions before that. What were you doing before XWP or even what were you doing before WordPress? What was, was there a Rob before WordPress? I don't know. Was there? <laughs> well, in my other life, which is how we all think about our lives pre WordPress. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, I run marketing at XWP. Um, so less, I mean, I'm surrounded by engineers all day and they can consistently sort of mess with my head with the sort of stuff that they do. Um, but so I run the marketing side of the business and that's been most of my career. I came out of school after doing the Europe thing, you know, went to uni and studied, um, studied marketing, came out of uh, university and sort of stepped into a series of marketing roles. And um, WordPress came along in the midst of that, I suppose. And it was, I found out that I was, I'm a bit of a tinkerer, right? I, I really enjoyed finding things within my role, within whatever problem I was trying to solve within marketing at that time, building little things that helped me solve something or speed something up or create some sort of little value or, or, or whatever, be a part of a campaign or be a part of some little turtle thing. Um, actually, it's really funny. I, I often think back to when that all started and I always seem to, the early sort of memory of me building something was this like behemoth of an Excel spreadsheet that sort of <laughs> did something for the company, but I would hate to look at it now. But um, yeah, in that sort of space, discovered WordPress and started, oh, cool, you install themes. Hey, wow, they can have lots of different themes and they do different things. And you know, oh, you can make themes? I'll try making a theme. And that's sort of how that all happened. And it's always been in the context, I suppose, with of marketing, I suppose. My roles have been very marketing focused, but then within that I've sort of you know, have used WordPress more and more and more and built things with it myself. Um, would call myself a little bit of a developer. I can make things with it. Um, but but yeah, it's been my journey getting to um, getting to WordPress or pre WordPress at least. Yeah, nice. And did you did you have a um I guess a bit more of your history with XWP. When did you join XWP and how did you, how did that come about? Yeah, cool. So I did run my own little agency, micro agency, me and a couple of contractors that sort of came in for projects here and there um, called number 11. I ran that for about three years and um, that was going well enough. Um, that was going good. Um, then I had a kid and kids are amazing at like taking your life and like turning it upside down and <laughs> oh, <I've heard. laughs> stomping on it. No, I'm kidding. Kids are amazing. But like they're obviously life gets crazy. You're busy. You have much you know, less free time. 
And so I was looking, the business was obviously taking out a lot of my time. So I was looking at ways of, um, of you know, how can I refine this, simplify this, systemize it, do all those sorts of things. Um, and then I was also really good friends um, at the time he lived locally uh, with Luke Carvis, who I know you've had on here before. Yep. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we've been friends for quite a number of years. And at the time he was working for XWP. Um, he was, he'd been with XWP for maybe a year or so at that time, maybe less, but if you know his story, he'd sort of transitioned through a product company. And anyway, he was there, he was an XWP. And um, he was on the leadership team there and they were obviously uh, coming off the back of, or sorry, I shouldn't say obviously, but they were coming off the back of a big project with News Corp um, that they'd seen some really great success with. And they were looking to sort of, I guess, scale the success they had seen there um, and grow, grow the company and were recognizing the need to, um, to, to invest into marketing really. So Luke said to them, I know a guy, he introduced me to them and um, they actually at the time had a, uh, cause they were a remote company, uh, XWP, so no centralized office. There's about 50 employees. I think at last, last count there's 14 countries, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, but, th- but then every now and again, they have a, get togethers, different teams at the time of get togethers. And one of them was on the sunshine coast of my hometown. So I got to meet some people and say hi. And then um, my first project with them was just a contract one um, that went well. And then they offered me a job and I've been working with them for coming up three years, I think. And um, it's really good. Awesome. Yeah. And XWP is one of the WordPress VIP companies. Is that correct? And what, yeah, what, does yeah. that, what does that mean? What did you get any special, you know, under the table privileges? <laughs> it sounds really special, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Web VIP, here's my card. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so WordPress.com VIP is um, WordPress.com's enterprise hosting platform, and um, which is an amazing platform, especially for, um, for, for websites that really need to scale. And therefore, we need a really high standard of code quality and reliability and all those sorts of things. Like when, when a site's getting hit with, um, you know, millions and millions of hits a month, you know, they, they need to be really stable because at that scale, it's, you know, a site goes down for half a day. That's, that's a lot of money. That's a big business impact. So WordPress.com VIP are a fantastic platform for, for facilitating those kind of sites. And um, they have a program, partner program that um, I guess any agency can sort of apply for, but it's very vetted. Um, there's certain standards sort of around code quality and stuff, things that I don't personally know a lot about the details, but yeah. our engineers do and our team leads and architects do, um, that you have to meet and uh, you know, obviously a familiarity with their systems and stuff like that. So that's what that is. I think there's about a dozen agencies uh, around the world that are um, listed there and they typically work with... Um, yeah, more enterprise clients. So um, that's that's what that program or partnership program is about. Hmm. So in the um, in your current role, you mentioned you do marketing. So what mm-hmm. if we were to get a little bit more specific? What does your kind of day to day look like? What have you been focusing on for the last week, for example? Oh, the last week. Okay, so definitely in the last week, uh, in the tactical sense have been working around um, two things. Uh, WordCamp US is in like a week and a half and we've got, um, I don't know, a dozen people going to that, so helping just facilitate them and you know, giving them what they need to represent XWP. Um, and then also working a lot on um, our content um, strategy as well. At a, at a larger level, uh, we, over the last, I would say six to nine months, six to nine months, not 69 months, <laughs> um, have, been, <laughs> have been really, uh, I guess refining our positioning and stuff like that. Where does XWP sit in the market? And it's not just what do we want to, or who has the most money or whatever, but it's about like what do we want to do? What value do we want to bring to the market? What are we good at doing? And asking a lot of questions around that and have settled on um, recognizing that um, this is this massive narrative around this. So stop me if I waffle on, but recognizing that we, we've got amazing team members, amazing engineers. Um, we've got a great experience in helping, um, I guess, web technology companies bring the value of their products uh, to the WordPress ecosystem. So we, um, we work with clients like Google and, 
and big commerce and, and cloud and area who have, have products and services that are external to WordPress, but there is a point at which the value that they have can be brought into the WordPress ecosystem. And we have, um, we have really strong opinions about how that should be done, things like that. But um, so a lot of, to, to, to put it simply, a lot of my marketing work at a strategic level right now is, is helping uh, take that idea and translate that into a lot of different things. So our messaging, um, how we sort of go to market and how we communicate, um, how we identify potential clients. Um, I guess you could say we um, do a lot of account-based marketing, um, which is where you identify you know, a, a company or an organization that really fits that profile that you want to work with um, and you you find ways to reach out to them or find ways to connect with them and talk to the right people. So um, I guess strategically, at a strategic level, that's the kind of work that um, I've been focusing on in the last six to nine months. <laughs> so <laughs> as just on that note of identity, does the X actually stand for something? I assume WP uh, is WordPress. Well, that's a good assumption. Um, no, <laughs> XWP stands for Xena Warrior Princess. Um, <laughs> 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 we have we have a wapu a wapu little exina uh, which is fantastic no uh the xwp <laughs> XWP is part of um a number of sister companies or a larger company group called x company um and there's two other two other primary businesses x team and uh, x5 and they do serve web and development um as well but to in very different ways different business models and different markets um, and X team was actually what XWP was birthed out of. It was a, a little subunit, a little team within X team um, that saw some success and uh, business owners and recognized that, hey, this is not just a, a one hit wonder thing with WordPress. There's something really cool here. I think it justifies uh, more focus and bringing together a business unit around that so they can you know, take that and run with it. And that's where the X comes from and the what, yeah, WP is WordPress. I like Xena Warrior Princess personally, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I can see why. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. much better, much better. <laughs> that's really cool. Wow, that's a, that's a lot right there. Um, we should wrap it up then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> can we, are we able to talk about the, uh, the Blocks plugin? Yeah, totally. Can we talk about that now, Roby? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Is that is that right? Because I, I have no idea about Block Lab, and I'm I'm kind of excited, a little bit excited about it. So, uh, mm -hmm. tell us what is Block Lab? Okay, so Block Lab is a plugin, um, free one on WordPress.org, um, that makes creating custom Guten Block, Guten Blocks, Gutenberg <laughs> Blocks, <laughs> <eat harder. laughs> it makes it easy. Um, makes it a lot easier than what it is if you're starting from scratch. Um, and there's a few tools sort of in this space that are working to help do that. But basically, the, I guess you could say the story is, even at the start of the year, um, uh, I helped manage and run the company website. And, um, obviously, Gutenberg was coming down the pipeline. Like, okay, let's look at this. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working with page, you know, page templates um, and things like that, which is a very sort of traditional sort of approach to, to WordPress development. So, okay, let's, let's get my head around this Gutenberg block thing. Um, I'm going to try and create a, a custom block. I think it was a hero block for, the, for, one, of the, for one of the pages. <clears throat> and I stepped into it. And like me personally, I'm a sort of just maybe above an amateur developer. And I was like, okay, I'm clearly going to have to upskill and level up here. And um, started and it was really, really, really hard. Um, not that it wasn't good. It was just really hard. It was beyond me. So I asked around, obviously, we've got some of the great engineers um, uh, in the company. I was like, hey, guys, like, you want to do this stuff? I want to start implementing Gutenberg um, uh, for the company site and other projects that we have. Can you help maybe just give me a bit of a, a 101 on it? And as they were starting to step into it, they're like, yeah, they got their head around it. But like, yeah, this is harder than perhaps expected, like getting setting up with the tooling and the different, um, you know, all that stuff. That, like I said, it's hard for me. Like, like I, we can see why you found this hard. I was like, okay, okay. So I put it on the shelf for a little while. And then uh, Luke Carvis, uh, who I mentioned earlier, um, was in Sydney, WordCamp Sydney, giving a, um, a talk on Gutenberg. 
Um, yep. so I think it was that was was that June? But Kemp Sydney was in June. It was yep. about mid year. I think so. Um, yeah, um, and uh, it was a at that time many in the audience, some of the audience hadn't even heard about it. Um, many in the audience had heard about it, but not really, not didn't really have their head around what it was yet or how it was going to work. So it was very much like, a, hey, this is good. Like, this is how you do it. It's really cool. You, it's, this is the new editing interface. And um, there was a great talk and it was really, really well received. And, um, and then, you know, some developers put up their hand and said, okay, so where do we go to develop this? And ask those sorts of questions. And then someone said, how cool would it be if there was like an ACF, Advanced Custom Fields, which is an amazing plugin for, for blocks. Mm. And Luke goes, yeah, that would, that would be really cool. <laughs> so he called me up and said, hey, Rob, we should build an ACF for blocks. I was like, oh, yeah, that could be cool. And so he, uh, Luke, myself, and another friend of ours called Reynard, um, in about a week, built the proof of concept. And um, just in our own time, after hours, you know, pulling things together and sort of built this interface. Um, it, 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 it's um, like if you're familiar with ACF, you know, you, you, you create your field group in the WordPress admin, and you configure the fields, um, and then you can um, use the functions within your WordPress templates. To, to call those fields and then obviously ultimately render the values of those fields in the front end and in your, in, your, in your templates and things like that. And it's very much an experience like that. You can create a custom block. It's a with block lab, you create a custom block in the WordPress admin, um, some basic settings, you know, giving it a name, giving it a, selecting an icon, which is what shows up in the uh, Gutenberg editor. Um, deciding where you want that particular field to be, whether you want it in the, the center content section or over in the block settings. I think it's called the inspector over on the right. And then you add fields, um, whatever text select, um, drop down, um, check boxes and things like that. Um, and then you can hmm. create a block template and then you can use a function that adds uh, block underscore field. I think it's something like that. You've got the documentation, don't trust me. Um, and um, yeah, and you can interact with, um, with uh, you, you create a simple little HTML template and um, create a custom block. And um, basically I'm like the litmus test for whether or not it's good because I can do it. And if I can do it, that means it's simple enough for most people to be able to do it. So, um, that's what the plugin does. Like I said, it sort of makes custom block development easy. Um, and we launched about two weeks ago and had some really fantastic feedback and people like it and we're starting to use it. And, um, actually even build some interesting things with it, things that we hadn't even thought of yet, um, which is always really fun to find out about. Yeah, that's cool when that happens. Yeah. So you mentioned ACF before. ACF mm -hmm. have also brought out ACF blocks. How is BlockLab, yeah. uh, what's, what's the point of difference there? That, yeah, no, good point. Um, so... They, I guess, solve a very similar problem, obviously, making custom blocks a lot easier, but kind of get there in slightly different ways. So ACF is like sort of a metadata uh, first approach at a Mac, like a high level, um, and block level is more of like a, a Gutenberg block first approach. And that's, it's hard to describe that, but if you use the two, you would notice the difference in terms of the user experience. Um, and then definitely, definitely technically under the hood as well. It's, 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 they've got two different approaches to getting to that similar destination. Okay. So ACF blocks might be better for someone who's already familiar with the ACF ecosystem to be able to, mm -hmm. to implement, whereas block lab might be a bit more native to how people use Gutenberg. Yes. If you like, if someone's seen that, like, we need to create some custom blocks. We need to make it easily, uh, make that easy. It's an easy way to create a custom block. And if you just need a single custom block, uh, like, like you might be running a great website, like, man, we just really need a pricing table and um, we really want it to be a block and we really want it to be styled according to our, you know, um, branding. And we don't want it to be like bloated with like yeah. um, all, perhaps potentially all the other stuff that are, uh, are things like a plugin or a thing could come bundled with. Mm -hmm. um, this is like a really simple, elegant way to getting a block. So a Gutenberg block, so you don't have to do a shortcode thing that you can edit and interact with in the Gutenberg editor, gives you a preview, um, and it makes it simple to get there. Yeah, nice. and you did all that since WordCamp Sydney, which I feel like was only six weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we did. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, the proof of concept was like, we like, let's see if this is cool, if we can do it, and we just sort of punched it out there. And then we put it out there um, 
and got some cool feedback. And then it was probably about a, a month ago. They were like, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's clean this up and let's um, launch it properly and get into people's hands because um, it seems that people could use it. And um, yeah, the feedback so far is we're kind of correct. Yeah. So, is there plans to use? Sorry, Tracy. No, you said, you said before that you've seen some interesting uses for it already. Yeah. What, what yeah. is the name that's been? So, so the one came through, um, it, was, it was from a lady who spotted a, you know, a, a small bug, you know, you, you get, you get bugs. And so, you know, I think we might have fixed it now or looking at it. But what she was doing is, um, cause currently we don't have a repeater field. Um, we don't have a post object field, which is, which is on our roadmap. Um, which would make this sort of thing easy, but, but basically she wanted to create a, a um, like a, a posts block, you know, a block that she could add and um, select a category or, or something like that and would display like three tiles to, to blocks, uh, to posts that she would want to, to, to link to so people could go off and read the post. And so she just used three, three text fields. Um, I think it was, you know, to select the post IDs, something like that. Um, Oh, I can't remember now, but there were three fields and then her block template just used WP query to set up and um, create those post blocks of uh, those, a, a block that contained the three posts. But it was just clever. Like she, she just found a simple way of, you know, just using a couple of text fields and then using WP query to create a fairly dynamic, um, yeah, block for her, for her website without having to you know, wait for like a post object or a yeah it's the sort of thing that i guess if you're used to using advanced custom fields that's the mindset that you mm. kind of use so that yeah that that makes sense that you would do something like that yeah it's really cool so that was cool to see awesome can't wait to have a play with it yeah if you have any questions please please ask them and feedback as well because it's like like it's a it's the, the plugin as it right now is it's good. Like you can use it and you can create some cool things with it. Um, like the blog lab website, we, everything on there is a block. Even the menu is a block. Um, and that was all built with block lab. And, but it's, um, they're all like this sort of like the base needed features. And so, like I said, we've got a bit of a roadmap, um, around, uh, around new field types, um, even around actually in admin templating. So right now you do have to add a, template file so you create your block and then you create an associated template file right now you have to add that template file to your child theme it's it's super simple <clears throat> mm. like really really simple but we're even trying to remove that need to open up a text editor and possibly mm. even do that in admin and yeah if you have, if, if you have ideas about that actually about how that could be implemented um i'd love to hear because mm. that is super simple like you said just i watched your little demo video and it is super simple but for people mm -hmm. that are that haven't done that before the thought yeah. of opening up a text editor yeah to edit their website is a big roadblock it's intimidating yeah yeah and that's it like right now like if you if you're remotely comfortable with opening up a text editor you'll be fine but you're right there is a massive group of people that they're like what 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 is that what are all these numbers and letters that ah, what, i don't know what i'm looking at um and yeah, if we can offer something that helps lower that, we, we think about it, but we think about it as lowering that barrier to entry mm. and the, the, the lower we can make that, the more accessible creating custom blocks can be, um, without block lab, without ACF, without these tools that sit in the middle, the barrier to entry to creating custom blocks is really high. Mm. Um, and I, and I do think I like we, this is, but we do think that um, WordPress developers should skill up, you know, and like if they've, if they've got the capacity and the time to skill up and to do this stuff, then, then we think that's important as well. Um, but this is a, another method, another path to getting there and achieving really cool things that we think is, um, I know, can provide value to the WordPress community. Mm. As well as the admin templating, like we were just talking about, and the... Yep and some extra fields. Is there anything else that's on the roadmap that you can share? Ooh, um, now you're making me think. Um, I guess think like extending like your field validation. Um, so creating like your custom rules and stuff like that. I'm not sure if ACF, I think they might do. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think you can create custom validation rules for various fields. Um, and then there's things like, you know, conditional um, logic for 
for um for, for fields and their availability when you're in the Gutenberg editor. Mm. Um, nothing else jumps to mind. I know that we'll finish this call. I'm like, oh, I forgot to say that really cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, I think that in admin editor is is the um, is the big one. Okay. Have, have you got any plans to start implementing block lab into internal projects within XWP? Is um, that the kind of thing you would use? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, um, one of the guys, so they he created a block just the other day for one of our client projects. I'm not actually, I don't know. I don't know exactly know the context of now if it went to production or whether it was for like a proof of concept or they were bringing together some, um, you know, UI testing or something like that. But yeah, he needed to create a block and he used block lab for it. So, that was cool. I'm like, if, hey, if our engineers think it's good to use, that's uh, that's good for me. <laughs> it convinces me. Nice. Yeah. What about any other brilliant ideas you've had in the past? Have has have any of those uh, developed into live plugins? <sighs> so. Uh, one of the projects that I've been involved in in recent years that I really still am passionate about and really, really love is Tide. And I know you've talked um, about Tide. I think you talked about it with Luke um, yeah. when he was on here. Um, and it's actually very aligned with Block Lab in ways in terms of um, making things more accessible. Tide, um, I'll try and keep it brief, but obviously Tide is a, a project that brings, I guess, coding, like, code quality and the achievement or adherence to coding standards um, makes it a lot easier or will make it a lot easier um, for WordPress developers. And um, it's a project that we've been working on for at XWP for a little over a year now. And um, it's coming along. And, um, but basically it solves that problem. Like, cause I mean, XWP's mission is about building a better web and building a better open web. And a part of that is, is, you know, when we go to develop, we develop according to best practices. And why do we do that? It's because what we produce will become, you know, be more performant. It'll be faster. Um, it's going to be more secure. Less things are hacked and less money is stolen, things like that. Um, it's more accessible for users and even developers that come into a project later on, you know, things like that. And um, doing those things, um, you, you need to, uh, you know, use tooling and, and various things that like assess your code as you're writing it and before you commit your code and um, make sure that you're adhering to these rules and stuff like that. And those, all that stuff is really fantastic. It's amazing. Once you can get set up with those things and have it sort of like peering over your shoulder as it's sort of, as you're writing and producing your code, making sure that you're, you're, you're sticking to best practices, it's really good because the outcome is highly performant. It's highly secure. And you know, the plugin or the thing that you're producing for um, you know, everyone, you're putting it on WordPress.org or for a specific client, you know that it's going to be good. You know that it's going to not be potentially put their business at risk. Mm. And, but getting set up is really hard. Um, like I find it like in my little amateur developer space, like it's very intimidating. Uh, when we onboard a new developer into our teams, it's um, part of their onboarding is very focused on, Hey, this is how we do things. This is how we, um, you know, set up these sniffs and make sure that we do all this sort of stuff. And it's, um, it's relatively inaccessible for like even moderate sort of WordPress developers. And Tide is about another, another project that's about lowering a barrier to entry. Um, we want it so that any WordPress developer can, um, can write code and somehow know that the code that they're writing is, is good code. And then if they're not writing good code, that they can somehow recognize that and then be guided into mm. fixing it or modifying it. So um, that's what Tide is. And I mean, I love the idea behind it. It's, I, I find it super inspiring because like WordPress, 32%, 33% of the web runs on WordPress. It's, it's massive. And if we could say we can improve the code quality by 5% or 10% across the board, like on average across the board, the quality of code lifted. And all of a sudden, thirty percent of the website of the web, the entire web, is is a bit is, is a bit faster. Imagine how much like a better user experience across the board that would be. Like it's a bit yeah. it's a bit more secure. How many fewer hacks are going to happen? How much people's credit card details aren't going to be stolen and money's like you know, identity and personal information is not going to be out there. 
Um, it's going to be more accessible. Like projects are going to be able to move faster mm. uh, because people are going to be able to work on them because the code that came before them is of a better standard and it's well commented and there's good documentation and all that sort of stuff. And like, I don't know, I think that's really cool. And hey, here's, here's one thing I thought about, well, we thought about it probably about a month ago, is the environmental impact, right? If someone codes a poor website, every time that website's loaded on someone's you know, device, it's, it uses a little bit extra you know, energy. The energy consumption is a little bit higher than it needs to be. And every yeah. time that server has to spin up and send the data, it's using a little bit more resource, right? Okay, a little like small website that gets half a dozen hits a week. Yeah, that's not a big deal. But like if you're news corp, right, getting your million hits a day, that's a big, that's a lot of energy consumed. That's a big carbon footprint. Like if we can, if we can write better code, like we're actually like, you know, we're, that's contributing to a sustainable planet. <laughs> but um, that's sort of like what we just realized the other, other month, like, hey, like that, that, is a good, that is another good reason to, yeah. to take code quality seriously. And I know I probably talk about this every episode, but with Australia's internet, every little bit you know, <laughs> is, is going to help everyone. <laughs> Please write good code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God bless the NBN. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. I've got another F-T-T-N. thinking question. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I guess this question probably isn't as big for you because you're a marketer first and a developer second. But if, if WordPress was to suddenly disappear, what next mm-hmm. for you? What next for me? I'd probably find another project in the same that's that offers a similar sort of value or, or works in the same sort of space. I mean, I guess, you know, there's the whole, when you're moving, work, moving between jobs or careers, you want to translate your skills from one to the other, you know, as efficiently as possible. So I guess a lot of my work has been in the WordPress open source web development space. If WordPress ceased to exist, I'd probably try and find another space that, that was kind of do the same sort of things. So I could transfer my skill set over. That's a really lame answer, but that's, I guess, a practical one. But, like, uh, I don't know, like, part of the reason why I like WordPress is, is um, well, it's scale and it's impact. But then also I do believe in open source as well, and I believe in the, that a, an open web is a better web. Um, and I think about the future, and if I want to be all philosophical about it, and I think of the future of mankind and my kids and all that sort of stuff, is I don't want them stuck in walled gardens. Um, where their data and their personal information is mined um, for the value, you know, just for the company's benefit, for a company's benefit, all that sort of thing. And so like, I, like, the reason I do love WordPress, one of the reasons I love WordPress is because it is open source and it is creating an open web. And I think that if WordPress ceased to exist, I'd probably align with another similar project and bring my marketing skills or whatever they are uh, over to that. So maybe hopping over to another X team. Maybe X, X triple. <laughs> XD. XDPL. <Yeah>, XDPL. <laughs> hmm. What about, what about just like another letter? Like Y, you know, X, Y, go, go in, go in the alphabetical order. Yeah. Just Could do that. <laughs> y, W, P, X, Y. <laughs> Incremental. <laughs> so uh, just, just completely off, um, off topic here, but uh, could you explain your background? Uh, we, uh, I, I'm very interested in what's going on behind you. Oh. Uh, so you've got obviously a, a gym sort of set up there. and so can It you looks good, eh? Hey? What's going on? It's, yeah. It looks good, right? So you guys will look at that and go, oh, yeah, Rob must be like a fit guy. Who would you? Uh, <laughs> it's just a storage room. Yeah, it's like a. <laughs> I've, I've snuck into the local gym and I'm just. <laughs> no, this is this is a um, I work out of a like I said, XWP is a remote company. Um, but one of my colleagues, Brendan, um, uh, he lives in the Sunshine Coast as well, and we rent an office together. It's like a like a I think they're called serviced offices. Sort yep. of like um, 
yeah, there's like 20 offices and they all have a shared kitchen and shared bills and that sort of thing. And we rent one of the offices there. So this is our little, our little spot. It's in like a, it's really cool actually. It's in like a old, an old hotel. I think it's like from like the 1950s or something like that. So it's got like all these cool old, uh, I'm going to say art deco, but someone's going to tell me I'm wrong there, but like really cool old features and massively high ceilings and, um, you know, trendy exposed brick walls. Oh yeah. Nice. Which is just, they ran out of plaster, but it was, oh, it was an artistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and the yeah. glass, the glass in the door, that was very, you know, the very, um, the frosted, whatever it is, glass. <laughs> so does that mean my my brick wall is trendy? Oh, totally. <laughs> oh look, totally. at, look at that amount of so exposed you, brick. That's, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the only that's the wrong. Only trend, that's the, only, the only trendier thing is like it, removing even more resources from the wall and just having a big open hole, hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cool. keep it in mind when I'm doing renos. <laughs> yeah. Sledgehammer, put it through it. I'll do it on the block. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hmm. so, um, well, if you, it, sorry, I was just filling, filling the gap, the void there with a bit of just, um, nonsense words. So, um, <laughs> so, um <laughs> cue the, cue the, uh, tumbleweed. A few sound bites. <laughs> so, yeah. Grab those. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I didn't really have anything useful to say, so continue on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just fill in the space Just yeah the no thanks i appreciate that yeah you're welcome so if you're not the gym junkie type what do you spend your spare time doing if you have any spare time you did mention you had three <laughs> spare time <laughs> no. no so I, have, I do have three little kids um so a lot of my spare time is hanging out with them i'm gonna say that four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a three-month-old, three-month-old. Three month mm. So um, they're pretty cool. I love hanging out with them. I do play football, soccer, you know, the kind of football where you actually kick the ball with your foot. As the real to, football, yep. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to handball. I don't know. Um, <laughs> egg so ball. I play, uh, yeah, egg ball. <laughs> hand, hand egg. Um, <laughs> so I, play, I play that for the local club as well. That's my little... Bit of exercise. You do Is look it, like a soccer, sorry, football player. A particular football player or just like a generic? No, you just look like you play it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the, de- the default avatar on FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now that you mention it. <laughs> so what, uh, what position do you play? What are you? Uh, center back. Center back. Yeah, center I, used to, back. I used to hang around in the backs only because I wasn't very quick. Yeah, you don't have to run as much. It's good. <laughs> uh, and everyone's in front of you, so you can just yell at them and tell them what to do. Yeah, and I was a bit more bulky, so I was a little bit more intimidating. It works. It works. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you any? Are you any good at it? Are you good at? Um, well, that? that's that's a very subjective question, right? It depends, like who you're comparing me to. Um, I'm I'm okay. I'm not great. I play amateur football on a Friday night. And have beer afterwards, sometimes before. So you know, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did when I played soccer too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You. Just sandwich it with a couple of beers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you play better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have more fun. You're well hydrated, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, staying, so. staying in this universe where WordPress mm-hmm. does exist mm-hmm. and if you, if you can develop something from nothing to a release plugin like BlockLab in less Ooh. than five I years is going to... Five, <laughs> five years is, was the question, but it sounds like that's a very long period of time for you. Real idea. <laughs> what, 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 what do you envisage yourself doing in the next two to three years? Oh, wow. That's okay. That's a different question. I can't. So is it what, like what, if I could build anything for WordPress, like what would I build right now? Or what do I see myself doing in three years? Well, the question was, what do you see yourself doing in your role? Okay. 
Oh wow, three years is a long way away. I mean, I love. I mean, I love my work with XWPDF. Like a really great group of people that are doing some really really cool things. If I'm there, if I'm with XWP in three years' time, I'll be very very happy. Um, I see Block Lab. You know, everyone when you launch something, you of course want it to be successful. The feedback so far has been really positive, um, and we would love to see that grow. Like we would we would release a some form of a premium or a pro component to that that will equip us to. If, if, if it's being used and lots of people are using it, having a premium product would actually would equip us properly to support and serve those people that use it, right? That makes, that's a, that's a big conversation, but that makes a lot of sense to me. So yeah. I'd love, in three years time, I would love Block Lab to be really popular and, and solving a really specific need around, around Gutenberg or the, the new WordPress editor in whatever form it evolves into becoming over the next three years, which I'm sure it's going to be, um, very different well much broader i suppose in three years time um yeah like i i I love i love the kind of work that i do i love the space that i'm in i love i love the idea of in three years time doing the same sorts of things and doing them better and doing them more and you know that sort of thing so Mm. mm. but can i can i answer that other question that i thought you were going to ask like if i could build anything yeah please yes Yes. Yeah. Is is I would build and it would be a feature plugin that would eventually be merged into core, but somehow delivers a better a better note in admin notification system. Uh-huh. Yes, please. please do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a dashboard with it. Yep. It's cool. Yes, please. Yep. Can you can you also build a um, a good solution to the um, the media library as well? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, on call. While you're at it. Actually, While we're at it, okay. <laughs> I'll do that, I'll do that. Wait, what's today? Today's Just tonight. tonight. <laughs> Thursday night. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, yeah. Happy yeah. to test it for you. <laughs> but okay. Before the next word camp, it'd be great. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. You, you've got until Friday. We'll give you an extra day. Because okay. we're, yeah, because we're not, so. <laughs> I don't need sleep. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. No. You won't be sleeping anyway. You got three kids, so. Yeah. And my my yeah. three year old code review. My three year old can do some QA testing, and yes. my three month old, I don't know, vomit on the keyboard or something. Correct. You've got it sorted. <laughs> <laughs> that's, awesome. that's cool. What does your wife do? She is definitely a full time mum right now. That would make sense. That, that makes sense. <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good, good answer. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she's amazing. My, my wife's amazing. She's um, she's an amazing mom. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah you're amazing. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. All these people that are right. listening. <laughs> good, good job. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Sarah is an amazing mom. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Rob, is there, um, I've run out of questions, but is there any, anything, have you got any other answers? Is there something else you'd like me to ask the question um, <laughs> so you can answer it? No, um, wow. I mean, we've talked about Block Lab, right? Obviously, I am very excited about Block Lab. And I could just circle about back to that all day. Um, check it out. I talked about XWP, really cool, a bunch of people doing some really cool things. Talk about Tide and code quality, which is another thing I'm passionate about. Um, one thing I'm really interested in exploring, and I don't have any answers to this, and I don't have any experience in this yet, but is I think it was last year's WordCamp US. It might have been WordCamp Europe. I think it was WordCamp Europe, uh, US. Matt Mullenweg announced the, um, the uh, it was like a, a project around marketing WordPress to the, the community. Or what's the, the name of the project or the team escapes me now. Do you guys remember it? Do you know what it's called? I don't remember the name, but I vaguely remember the conversation. I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure yeah. I saw something about it. Yeah, so that's, if of all the things that are going on right now in WordPress and in the background and stuff like that, that's something that I'm really, I really wanted to step into a bit more and get my head around. I, I, there are people doing some things within that already. And they're probably doing some really cool things. I'd love to learn what they're doing and see what I can do to help. But like, I think that, like, I really do, like I said, I really do believe in WordPress. I really believe in open source and the value it brings. 
And like one of the only things that's stopping us from bringing its value to more people is, is marketing, is people understanding. Mm. I mean, like you don't really hear the, oh, is it WordPress just for blogging thing, right? Like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't hear that that much anymore. But like, you know, a few years ago, that was a really big thing. It's like you, as an agency, you try and sell WordPress and they would say, oh, isn't that just like a blogging thing? We want to write yeah. a website. That's, that, but that, the problem there was that it was like a positioning thing. It was a messaging thing. It was, mm. it was, um, it was, a, it was a brand problem, the brand of WordPress. So the idea in the minds of potential users was that was misaligned, WordPress was misaligned with what it actually was. And I feel like that's, um, uh, I mean, WordPress is obviously doing amazing things, but like if we wanted to bring more value to more people, I think that if we can, uh, as agencies, as individuals, if we can contribute to the marketing, and marketing is such a dirty word sometimes, but the marketing of WordPress, to collectively, much in the same way we collectively contribute via code to the, to the core, to the plugins and themes and everything like that. But if we can get behind um, marketing even more to help better represent WordPress, better represent open source mm. to the world, more, more individuals, more businesses, more governments, more organizations are going to have, be making more informed decisions about the CMSs and everything that they use because they're not just going to be getting pitched a really flashy from a really flashy sales presentation from some closed proprietary CMS from, you know, that have got all this big budget for marketing. They're going to be more informed that there are other options out there. So like I said, it's not something that I've, I'm actively doing right now, but I, I, I would love to, it's on my radar. It's something that I want to, I want to start doing more of. And um, I think it's something that like a lot of people, and there's something amazing marketing people in the WordPress community. Mm. Um, I think it's something that we can do to contribute back to the project. I think something that probably adds to the confusion of, of the people that think WordPress is a, a bloggers platform is the majority of marketing that is about WordPress is about WordPress.com, which, which is targeted at bloggers. Mm. And yeah. so that, yeah, there probably needs to be a bit more marketing about, you know, the, the open source flavor mm. and, um, and the, the community and expertise and everything behind that, they can actually mm. build stuff like you're doing, you know, for, if, for companies like News Corp, you know, the, mm. the big enterprise level companies, mm -hmm. it's, it's powerful enough to, to handle projects for them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, and, and a lot of people are really confused, like about the difference between .com and .org. Um, I, I think, that there could be better messaging around what the difference is and what the use cases, like which, you know, which option should you choose depending on your needs. Mm. It's not very clear. People get confused. It's, um, I'm, I'm fascinated or very intrigued about, as I think we all are, the impact that Gutenberg is going to have on um, on all the different layers of WordPress. Like it's a big change to the editing experience, but like, mm. yeah. I mean, like I, I believe that the net effect of, work, of Gutenberg is gonna be positive. I think that like, I think what they're aiming for and everyone contributing to that are aiming for and doing and have, have mostly produced is, is really good. Mm. And I think that it sets WordPress up um, f to, to be stronger and better into the future. Like, uh, I think it's, it's already a bit of a bumpy road and I think it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy road for a little while longer. Um, but I'm, it's, I'm, I'm fascinated by the idea of the potential impact on the way the market perceives WordPress as well. Like I know it may not have any impact, this new editor, or maybe like this change in editing experience and what it allows developers and designers to do and the way to think about, you know, producing um, and building with WordPress, like it could just, people could just recognize that WordPress is actually, no, that really does work for us now. And different, more companies and organizations are going to have a, a fresh sort of take on this. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the impact on, on, of Gutenberg on not just us as a WordPress community, but like the whole market is going to be very interesting. And um, obviously we have to do our best to sort of guide it and the way it's perceived and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think some things will be, some things that we didn't even expect will happen. Mm. Definitely. 
I'm excited about something, probably a long-term thing. I don't know about short-term. I've got my own opinions on that, but we're not here to talk about that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Something I think Gutenberg could be really positive for is, is lowering that barrier to entry. Not, not so much to, I guess, mum and pop shops building their own websites, but designers who are, you know, even just web UX UI designers being able to, to, I guess, do a bit more of their own building and experimenting and coming up with new ideas for, you know, mm. how a website looks so that, you know, 90% of websites online don't all look exactly the same. Mm. Um, just being thinking of outside the box a bit more, having a bit mm. more control over, over layout and positioning. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's one of the positives that will come from it. Mm. I'm looking forward to... Well, actually, the date's moved, hasn't it? Was well, yep. going to be the twenty seventh, but now it's actually not locked down anymore, is it? It's no. just generally subject to change or something like that. Depends how the release candidate goes. Apparently, yes, that's right. Yeah, which was released on Friday, I think. No more questions. Not for me. I'm good. I'm good. You're good. Cool. You're good. But do you have any more questions? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually do. Um, no. <laughs> no. I was like, oh, cool, he's got another qu- Oh, he's kidding. <laughs> no, all the questions are, have been asked. All the questions have been asked. Well, thanks very much for your time, Rob. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, any time, except not next time, because that would be <laughs> Back to back with Rob's Any other time. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've, it's been very good to chat and talk about Block Lab. Sounds very exciting. And I'm sure I'll see you at the next WordCamp in Australia. Wherever that is. Where is the next one? Kind of don't um, know yet. It's tail end of the year. Yeah, we don't there's, 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 there, yeah, there's a few coming up no. next year. Melbourne. I reckon we need, to have, we need to have another WordCamp Sunshine case. I, I think, think that so. was great. That was my first WordCamp. Really? Yeah. Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. I was, I was definitely at that one. But you'll have to come to uh, Port Macquarie one when we have it. Oh, yeah. Word, yeah. Word, WordCamp Port Macquarie. Macquarie. First ever WordCamp in Port Macquarie. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'll come down. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Rob.